So on the warm-up, we are going to distribute the negative 3 in to everything on the inside. So you multiply coefficients and then add your exponents. Negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. This would be n to the first. When you multiply n to the first and n to the second, you get n to the third. Then negative 3n times negative 5n is a positive 15. We would add our n exponents, so that would be n squared. And then the last thing would be negative 3n times 5, which would be negative 15n. Go ahead and put your warm-up away, and we are going to update our journal. Update your page numbers. Do a unit pocket and put in your new unit divider. Update your page numbers. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. This unit is all about factoring. So in order to factor, we need to talk about factors. Factors are numbers that evenly divide certain numbers or variables. So if you look at your unit divider, this is the gist of what we're doing. We are factoring. So instead of being given two binomials and being asked to multiply, we're going to be given the trinomial and be asked to go backward and ask what are the two binomials that multiply together to get that. So let's first talk about the GCF. The GCF is your greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is the largest number that divides uh, the given numbers. So the way you find your greatest common factor is by listing all of your factors and then looking at what they have in common and picking the biggest one that they have in common. So we are going to do the GCF, um, I'm going to do it like this, of 12 and 20. So we need to list out all the factors of 12. So you gotta think about what times what gives you 12. So we're always gonna start out with one. So I'm gonna do one times 12 is a factor. And then I go up from one and I say, okay, does two evenly divide 12? Yes. And I find out what that is, 2 times 6. And then 12, I would go up 1, 2, let's see 3. Does 3 evenly divide 12? Yeah, it's 3 times 4. And then I look and see, will 4 evenly divide 12? Yes, it's 4 times 3, but don't I already have that? I don't need to list it again. And once it circles back around, you're done. So let's do 20. So 
So start out with 1. So 1 times 20. And see how I'm putting it times 1 times 12 is 12. 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times 4 is 12. I'm doing the same thing over here. So 2, it's an even number, so it evenly divides it. 2 times 10. Will 3 go into 20 evenly? No. 4? Yes. 4 times 5. And you go up from there. Five? Yes, it's five times four. Don't need to rewrite it. So here are my factors. So I want to find the greatest common factor. So they both have one, but that's not the greatest. They both have two. They both have four. Is there anything bigger? No. So four is the GCF. Okay, if you don't have your calculator, go ahead and get your calculator now. Let's talk about how to use the calculator to find our factors. What we're going to do, um, I'm going to write over here, calculator. We're going to go to Y equals. Oh, I need to clear out my calculator. Second plus seven, one, two. It's kind of a mess. There was too much in there. Go to y equals. We're going to do 12 divided by x on y1. And then on y2, we're going to do 20 divided by x. You can do it as a fraction with the alpha y equals like this or where it says divided by. They both work. You can do one at a time or both at the same time. And then you're going to hit, uh, go to the table, do second graph, look at the table. This gives you all your factors. So I'm going to start with 12. 1 times 12. See how it's 1 and 12 are x and y pairs? 2 and 6. 3 and 4. 4 and 3. And then we have like 5 and 2.4. We don't want anything that has decimals. Or fractions. Okay. Then 20. See how we have 1 and 20? 2 and 10. Uh, 3 is no, 4 and 5, 5 and 4. If you would like to do this one at a time, you can. So I'm going to go back to my y equals and clear out y2 so I can do it one at a time. That might be easier to look at. But that lists all your factors. Anything that's a decimal is not a factor because it has to be a whole number. So you could get your list from the table on the calculator. Okay, let's go to the second example. Okay, so we would list out the factors of 4 and list out the factors of 6. So if you want to use your calculator, you'd do 4 divided by x in the table. And you'd go 1 at a time. So 1 times 4. Two times two. That's all the factors, because if you go down, you have 4, 1, and then the rest are decimals. So we're done. Okay, go back. Do 6 divided by t uh, x. One and six. 
two and three. Then it says three and two. And then we have decimals and we ha then we have six and one. So it circles back around. So let's just see what they have in common. So they have one in common, they have two in common, and then nothing else. So the two is the GCF. All right, let's do the next one. GCF of, let's do three numbers, three, four, and nine. So go ahead and find your factors of 3, 4, and 9 using your calculator or in your head. Three is just one and three. There's nothing else. Four would be one and four and two and two. Nine, one and nine, and three and three. So now we look and see, remember it has to be the greatest common factor, which means it divides the largest number that divides the given numbers. Uh, is there anything they all have? One, that's the only thing. When it's one, that means it's prime. When the GCF equals one, it is prime. Here's our next example. GCF of 18, 24, and 21. Go ahead and work it out. So if you've forgotten, I'm going to go ahead and do that. If you're good, go ahead and keep on going. Don't put anything that has decimals, and just make sure you have them all, and you don't have to write them in reverse order. And once you get back to 18, then you're done. 18 and one at the bottom. I'm gonna do 24. And go back up to the top. I 
after you go down to 24, the number that you're doing the GCF for, you're done. Just make sure you have them all listed, but don't duplicate it. You'll have to do it twice. I wouldn't put 2 times 10.5 because that's a decimal. After I go to 21 on the X side, I'm done. So double check your numbers with mine. So let's see, what do they have in common? They all have a 1. These two have a 2, but that one doesn't. This has a 3. 3, 3, 3. Now is there anything bigger than 3? Nope, so 3 is our GCF. Okay, I'm going to go to the next page. Okay, so GCF of 5 and 10. Sure, put it in. If you're good at factoring and good at finding your factors, you can use the table just to check your work. If you're not good at it, it's okay. Use this calculator. Looks like it's just one and five. That's it. Five is called a prime number. Remember that? Okay, ten. One and ten. Two and five, five and two, ten and one, so we're done. So what is the greatest common factor? Five. If you can't circle it in all of the numbers, then it's not your GCF. All right, let's do GCF of X and X squared. Oh, now I added in some algebra because I added a variable. Okay, so x and x squared. We can't use a calculator for that. Um, let's see, x and x squared. What do they have in common? What do they all have? An x. Do they all have x squared, though? Mm -hmm. No. So, actually, our GCF is just x. Ask yourself, what do they all have? And if they all have an x, that's your GCF. They all have at least an x. What about x squared and x to the fifth? What do they all have? They have an x, but don't they all have a squared hidden in there? Yeah, so it's x squared. Okay, let's do another one. There we go. 
Of course, I had to throw in different things, right? <coughs> okay, what do they all have? Since we have variables, do they all have an X? This has an X, this has an X. Does this have an X? No. Okay, now, this has a Y. This doesn't have a Y. This doesn't have a Y. I mean, it has a Y. Do they have anything in common at all? No. So this is 1, which means it's prime. If they don't have everything, the same thing, all in common, it's prime. Okay, last one. So we have a mixture of numbers and variables. So we'll start with the numbers 5 and 10. So let's write our 5 and 10. So what's our number GCF? Five. Now what is our variable GCF? X what? Squared, yep. Because they both have an X squared hidden in there. This has X squared. This has X4, which means there's an X squared in there. Okay, I lied. I said that was the last one. There's one more. Sorry. List out your factors first. Now what's your GCF of the numbers? Three. Okay, what about variables? Do they both have an N? No. So our GCF is just three. Okay, you are gonna do the quizzes that is on online. Um, make sure to show your work on paper.